Hi again, this is Elisa. Thank you for watching my videos. And um, I'd like to read one more section in the introductory um, segments to the writings of Nietzsche and Daishonin. This one is the translator's note, which has some important um, information to convey. So um, if you would be interested in hearing that, please stay tuned and I will begin reading now. It's called the translator's note. We would like to draw your attention to a number of words used in these translations whose meaning in Nietzsche and Daishonin's Buddhism is somewhat different from or has an additional dimension to the generally understood sense. Many of the terms and concepts used by various religions, philosophies, and cultures, though superficially similar, have quite different implications. A correct understanding of those terms and concepts as they are used in the Daishonin's Buddhism leads to a richer reading experience and more profound grasp of his message. Thus, we present the following brief explanations of terms and a few paragraphs in which we discuss points that bear on the translations themselves. All but the most common Buddhist terms appearing in the translations and notes are also explained in the glossary, and each work in this volume is accompanied by a brief background essay. First word is deity or God. These terms indicate the positive forces or influences in life society, and the natural environment, which create happiness and protect life. They represent the functions that support and protect people in response to the good causes they make. So it's very different from, say, uh, Christian God or, or Jewish God, right? They're positive forces. Demon or devil. These terms indicate the forces in people's lives, in society, and in the natural environment that cause misery and unhappiness and even destroy life itself. For instance, the devil king of the sixth heaven, which you will see in the writings often, is the personification of the fundamental ignorance or darkness inherent in life. In terms of Buddhist practice, demons and devils function to prevent people from attaining enlightenment. It is said that Chakamuni first conquered the devil within and then attained enlightenment. In Buddhism, there are two kinds of demons, good and evil. The Chinese character for demon means the spirit of a deceased person and indicates either a spirit that has come to be revered, or revered as a deity or a spirit that brings harm to people. The term hungry spirits, for example, refers to the spirits of, of the deceased that suffer starvation as a result of evil deeds performed when they were alive. Evil. When the word evil is applied to Buddhists, it refers to their acting against the teachings of the Lotus Sutra and thus making the cause to fall into hell or a state of intense suffering. When it is applied to people who are unaware of Buddhism, it refers to their being ignorant of their own Buddha nature and making no effort to develop it. Heaven. The term heaven indicates either the dwelling place of the heavenly gods or the gods themselves. Mind. The Japanese word kokoro or shin, which is customary translated as mind or heart, has no exact English equivalent, for it is a term that encompasses the whole of one's mind, spirit, emotions, volition, and psyche. It can also indicate life as a psychosomatic entity. Thus, when one encounters the word mind or heart, one should understand it in its widest possible sense. Punishment. Buddhism expounds the principle of cause and effect one receives either positive or negative results, depending on whether one's actions have been good or bad. In Buddhism, there is no transcendental being, such as a god or gods, who bestows reward or inflicts punishment. The terms punishment and punish either indicate the retribution or negative result one incurs for one's offenses or communicate moral lessons salvation or save. 
To save people means to free them from sufferings and enable them to become truly happy by leading them to enlightenment or Buddhahood. School. Various denominations of Chinese and Japanese Buddhism are mentioned by Nichiren Daishonin in his works. In translation of Buddhist literature, the term school is generally used to refer to the denominations of both Chinese and Japanese Buddhism. We have followed this practice. Sin. The word sin is used in the same sense as the words offense and crime. To avoid misunderstanding that may arise from preconceived notions of the meaning of sin, we have used the term only when it is clear what offense it refers to, as, for example, the sin of slander. Way. The way means either the way to attain enlightenment or enlightenment itself. Thus, the Buddha way means either the practice to attain Buddhahood or Buddhahood itself. The Bodhisattva way means the Bodhisattva practice to attain enlightenment oneself and to lead others to that goal. Additional points. The cyclical signs and divisions of the day, such as Kanoe Saru and the Hour of the Tiger, warrant a brief explanation. They are based on an ancient system, originally Chinese, for counting days, months, and years, and for indicating directions and the time of day. The system consists of two ordered sets of Chinese characters, one of 10 units called the 10 stems or trunks, and the other of 12 units called the 12 branches. The sets were used together in two symbol combinations with one from each set to create a cycle of 60 signs, usually known as a sexagenary cycle or Chinese zodiacal symbols. In counting years, the cycle was simply repeated endlessly. The 12 branches written out clockwise around a circle and bearing the names of different animals were also used to mark time in two hour intervals. The hour of the rat, for instance, stood for the time between 11 p.m. and 1 a.m. See Appendix O for the names of the 10 stems and 12 branches, the total cycle 60 combinations, and the time intervals indicated by the 12 branches. In reckoning a person's age, the Japanese from ancient times until as recently as 1950 considered an infant to be one year old at birth and added a year with the passing of each New Year's Day. All ages given in this book follow that system. A reference should also be made here regarding quotations, quotations from Chinese Buddhist texts. Quotations from those texts often appear in Nichiren Daishonin's Gosho Zenshu, the complete works of Nichiren Daishonin, in abbreviated form without any direct reference, for example, to the grammatical subject or tense of the passage. However, such passages have been rendered in English so that they may be understood clear, clearly. To enhance readability, the translators have sometimes chosen not to put their additions to the original in brackets. The titles of all documents referred to by the Daishonin have been translated into English, with the exception of those that consist of the name of the place where the author lived, such as Tung Chun, the name of the place where the author Chu Chi Tu lived. The Japanese titles of those documents are found in Appendix H. All titles are italicized except those of the sutra. Uh, you're not going to see that. The titles of the sutras that retain their Sanskrit names, such as the Susidikara Sutra, appear in Romanized Sanskrit. Um, and this is about how they're written. Um, Additionally, most of the names of the Buddhas, Bodhisattvas, deities, and mythical personages mentioned by the Daishonin have been translated, many for the first time. The names of actual historical figures such as Shakyamuni, Shariputra, Nagarjuna naturally remain unchanged. The names of Buddhist schools are also rendered in English. Example of the above, many treasures Buddha, Bodhisattva superior practice, the Wisdom King Craving Filled, and the True Word School. 
In attempting to translate proper names, however, there were some cases where the meaning of the Chinese original was unclear or where the Sanskrit or original was unknown, thus making an accurate translation impossible. In these cases, the name is simply presented in the Romanized Japanese, for example, the king's Senyo or Damira. All personal names are given according to the prevailing custom of their land of origin. Thus, with Japanese personal names, the family name comes first and the given name second. Minamoto no Yoritomo, for instance, is Yoritomo of the Minamoto family. Sometimes the second element in a name is an official title. In the name Shijo Kingo, for example, Shijo is the family name and Kingo the title of the government office held by him. His given name is Yoritomo. Almost all the Buddhist terms such as Ichinen Sanzen, Sanzen Jintengo, and Goyaku Jintengo that have heretofore appeared only in Japanese have also been translated. Certain Japanese expressions that believers in Ichinen Daishonen's Buddhism have taken to quite naturally, however, were not translated because of their familiarity and suitability. Those include Daimoku, Gohonzon, Shoju, and Shakabuku. Also, some English Buddhist terms have been revised. The translations in the, this volume have been done over a nearly 30 year period. And in the interim, there have inevitably been changes in the use and perception of the English language as well as improvements in our understanding of how to convey Buddhist concepts. Thus, for instance, the object of worship has been changed to the object of devotion and the true entity of all phenomena to the true aspect of all phenomena. Interesting. For the sake of easier reading, no Japanese, Chinese, or Sanskrit words have been italicized, et cetera, et cetera. You're not going to see that. Additionally, um, oh, that's just how they're printed. Um, also, for the reader's convenience, endnotes are sometimes repeated nearly verbatim so that there is no need to leaf through the book in search of information. It's nice. Um, They also are using instead of BC and AD, like 100 BC or uh, 1907 AD, they use BCE and CE before the Common Era and Common Era. Um, a final word should be added concerning dates in the translation. In pre modern times, Japan, like China, recorded dates exactly based on the lunar calendar. Thus, the dates of the Daishonin's birthday is the 16th day of the second lunar month of 1222. But this corresponds to April 6th, 1222, on the Gregorian or solar calendar. New Year's Day on the lunar calendar, which was regarded as the beginning of the first month of end of spring, varied from year to year but always fell somewhere between what would have been January 21 and February 19th on the Gregorian calendar. So when it says, you know, um, New Year's Day in the Go Show, we're really looking at what would be the equivalent for us of a time between January 21st and February 19th. Because the months of the lunar year were shorter than those of the solar one, it was necessary to add an extra month at certain intervals so that the lunar year accurately reflected the seasons. Such a month is known as an intercalary month and occurred regularly about once every 33 months. In the translations, such months are indicated by the word intercalary, as in the intercalary first month. In conclusion, we would like to mention that in the past, scholars believe that Buddhism was officially introduced to Japan in either 538 or 552. In the writings of Nichiren Daishonin, perhaps in accordance with the Chronicles of Japan, the latter figure, 552, is used. Studies now identify the year conclusively as 538. That concludes all the introductory materials, and I will read one of the Go Show the next time, 
I hope you will join me on this um, effort to read to you from the major writings of Nietzsche and Daishonin. Thank you so much. Please hit subscribe if you'd like to be notified of future readings. And if you liked this um, lesson or reading, please hit the thumbs up. Thank you so much and enjoy.